While Microsoft currently holds the reigning title of the world's most valuable company with a market capitalization of nearly $3 trillion, a company like Tesla could eventually catch up to the tech giant. We anticipate that Tesla's automotive manufacturing by itself may outperform indices such as the S&P 500 over the long run. During Tesla Head of Investor Relations Martin Vietch's talk at the invite-only Goldman Sachs Tech Conference in San Francisco, the executive shared some important tidbits of information that are pertinent to the EV maker's plans for the future. These include, among other things, a third revolution of sorts in automotive manufacturing. In the past 120 years or so of the automotive industry, there have only been two revolutions in vehicle manufacturing. One of these happened in the early 1900s when Ford launched the Model T, and the other happened in the 1970s when Toyota, through hard work and optimization, figured out a way to optimize vehicle production costs. But electric vehicles are a completely different animal, so the opportunity for yet another vehicle manufacturing revolution is there. EV architecture is so different from the internal combustion engine, it allows for a third revolution in automotive manufacturing. The Tesla executive stressed why it's important for automakers to optimize their manufacturing costs, noting that the per-vehicle cost of production would be the most important metric to monitor in the EV sector in the coming years. This would be the deciding factor that would determine how many cars companies can make and how big car makers can become. Tesla has made a lot of headway in this sense. It used to cost Tesla $84,000 to produce each car in 2017. In recent quarters, this number has been reduced to $36,000 per vehicle. What's important to note here is that almost none of these savings were actually from cheaper battery costs. They were simply the result of Tesla's continuous efforts to improve its vehicle design to make manufacturing as simple as possible. The introduction of factories that are specifically designed for EV production also helped a lot. This can be seen in Tesla's strategy in recent years. With the Model Y, Tesla started its use of megacasts, which drastically reduced the number of components used in producing a vehicle. Tesla's use of megacasts has seen immense praise, and other car makers such as Volvo and Mercedes have hinted that they also intend to follow a similar strategy in the near future. Tesla's Fremont factory is a perfect example of mentioned point. The plant, which Tesla acquired in 2010, is a facility that was not designed in any way for EVs. Tesla's newer factories like Gigafactory Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Gigafactory Texas, on the other hand, are specially built to optimize the production of all electric vehicles. The output of Giga Shanghai, which has recently surpassed the Fremont factory, is proof that Tesla's dedicated EV factory idea is sound. What's interesting is that Tesla is a company that's known to push innovation even as its vehicles are already leading the industry. This was something that was hinted at by the Tesla executive, who noted that as the company's new factories produce more cars, the manufacturing costs per vehicle could drop even lower than $36,000, and that's before the lion's share of battery savings from the company's 4680 program kick in. He also shared some of the company's plans for the next five years. He also provided some key insights about the company's battery supply, both for its electric vehicle business and its energy division. Tesla is focusing on two key concepts that would be critical for the electric vehicle sector for the next five years. These two are battery supply and technology, as well as the manufacturing cost of electric vehicles. Vietcha highlighted that the industry would only grow as fast as its battery supply. Fortunately, Tesla has made a ton of headway in this aspect. The executive noted that Tesla typically allots about 90% of its battery cell supply for its electric vehicle program and around 10% for the company's energy storage products. But while Elon Musk has brought up the issue of rising cost of battery materials in the past, Tesla has actually managed to secure access to all the battery supply that its EV and energy business needs. For the first time I can remember, we can access all the supply we need for both businesses, Vietcher reportedly said. When asked about how Tesla was able to improve its access to its battery supply, Vietcher noted that the company's deals with more suppliers helped a lot. Tesla had long been supplied by batteries from Panasonic, 
But in recent years, the EV maker has expanded its battery supply through deals with companies like CATL and LG Every Solution, which supply Giga Shanghai. These battery companies are building capacity extremely quickly, which works for Tesla as the EV maker is also building out its operations very aggressively. This is the most important part of how this industry can grow in the future. If the industry can 10x from here, the supply chain will need to 10x as well, Vietja said. Tesla has historically been valued by investors and analysts purely as an automotive company and has not taken into account the other areas in which they operate. Tesla should rather be viewed more as a tech company than a car company. The high fundamentals may also be fueled by the fact that Tesla is working on solving arguably the most meaningful challenges that society is set to face in the future. Tesla delivered 1.81 million units in 2023, according to their fourth quarter report. And earned in the first quarter this year, Tesla produced over 433,000 vehicles and delivered approximately 387,000 vehicles, gives them a 20.35% market share in the overall EV market. Given Tesla's order backlog and the fact that it cannot yet meet customer demand, their market share could still increase in the future. And a total GAAP gross margin of 29.1%. We expect this automotive gross margin to increase over the next eight years, given cost reductions, while scaling production by 10x between now and 2030 and achieving economies of scale. Tesla increased production by more than nine times between 2017 and 2021. Given Wright's law and the fact that Tesla is expected to produce more than 10 million vehicles by 2030, which is a unit increase of about 10 to 11 times, car gross margins are expected to be closer to or above 42.9%. The last parameter of great importance is Tesla's average selling price. Currently, Tesla has an average unit selling price of about $52,000. While some analysts believe Tesla's ASP will rise over time, we think it'll fall due to Tesla's introduction of a super cheap, likely smaller sedan with a target price of closer to $25,000 to $35,000 US dollars compared to Tesla's cheapest Model 3 of about $47,000 US dollars. In this analysis, we assume Tesla lowers its ASP to $42,000 10.8 million sales at an ASP of $42,000 would generate $453.6 billion in automotive revenue. At a 38% gross margin for automobiles, that would equate to $172.37 billion in gross automotive revenue. However, we expect the biggest move to be made in the OPEX portion of the business, as Tesla can scale this up dramatically in the coming years. For example, Tesla's fully self-driving option currently costs the customer $15,000. This will likely increase dramatically as it moves closer to a level 5 fully self-driving autonomous car. Tesla currently has a fairly high OPEX, which Elon Musk has also admitted, and it should drop dramatically as Tesla scales and variable costs drop closer towards Tesla's fixed costs. Currently, Tesla is still doubling production almost every year and expanding into different verticals hence the high OPEX costs. Tesla had an operating margin of 12.1% with an operating income of $6.52 billion, while adjusted EBITDA is $11.62 billion, bringing the adjusted EBITDA margin to 21.6%. We believe Tesla can increase this adjusted EBITDA margin to 32% over the next eight years, driven in part by improvements in gross margins, low fixed costs, rights law, historical improvement in margins, and expansion of software-based revenues. Macroeconomic challenges could also play a role in Tesla's ability to expand, given the inversion of the yield curve and skyrocketing commodity prices. But Tesla seems well-positioned to absorb most of those commodity supply chain shocks to date, and demand might not be a problem given the introduction of a cheaper EV and a declining ASP plus the fact that EVs could reach sticker price parity very soon. Tesla's expanding into most of the key industries of the future, which will presumably include energy, transportation, computing, manufacturing, and robotics. Beyond auto manufacturing, all other opportunities are worth trillions of dollars in our estimation. T. 
Typically, analysts using classic valuation methods try to value Tesla and compare it to other car companies. While car manufacturers do not actually cater to the kind of business Tesla is in. Companies like Ford and GM are unlikely to develop humanoid robots, an advanced AI division to develop autonomous driving, scale robotics like Tesla's Gigafactories, develop renewable energy generation and storage, so on and so forth. That doesn't mean those companies are better or worse than Tesla. They're just not in the same target sectors. Tesla is positioned to become perhaps the first company with a market capitalization of 10 trillion US dollars in the far future, citing radical innovations such as Optimus, RoboTaxi, and AI. It's our belief that Tesla's automotive sector alone will outperform the S&P 500 by a handful over the next eight years, even if we don't factor in the trillions of dollars that could be generated by self-driving cars, autonomous cabs, humanoid robots, energy generation and storage, insurance, robotics, automation in general, and more. Thanks for watching. Until next time.